Welcome. There are going to be five chapters to this story. We're going to introduce you to the man, the myth, and the legend known as Gary Manning. I remember back to when I was like 12 years old. Um, the first time for me um, when I really got uh, passionate about something. You know, passionate about something that gave me the confidence um, to feel like I could do anything. So, so I went into this interview process um, with 500 applicants, and they're only taking 25. So the, uh, the 25 applicants that they were taking, um, you know, they, they were supposed to be the best of the best and I didn't know anything about programming websites so I picked up a magazine before going into the interview and the, uh, it was on VRML this this language that was beyond HTML but I didn't know HTML either so I read it and went into the interview and it was kind of a fake until you make it thing I said oh yeah don't don't worry about that HTML stuff the VRML is where it's at and I started talking about that kind of deflection and, but confidence into myself knowing that if I did get the job I could read a book and figure it out and make it happen so it was, it was really pivotal for me to go into that job, figure it out, read a whole bunch, and then create something that this community program enabled me to do. And we ended up winning. Um, so that put us in front of uh, one business magazine, um, it, it gave us the confidence to one more affirmation to know that we could do anything. Um, so dove deep into things that, you know, from, from 12 to uh, 17, 18, that kids just didn't dive into. I dove into books that were for adults and books that were for, for people much greater. It's like, you know what, I can figure it out. It's okay. And listening to some engineers and getting great conversations with engineers going, that they had problems in connecting uh, computers uh, to pull out the data out of all the automation equipment. And I said, well, you know, you could just do it this way. This would be the way you do it. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's, that's crazy. Why don't you apply? So I applied. Um, and then worked with uh, Central Engineering for six years at Ford. And they sent me to school for everything uh, because they had also had confidence in me in some, some early projects I worked really hard at to be able to be successful for them. We sent me for programming, for automation, for project management, for management, just kept sending me to school uh, because I invested in them, so they invested in me. Now, I was working... So a bunch, a group of really brilliant psychologists in the, in the field of expertise research have sat down and tried to figure out how long do you have to work at something before you become really good, right? And the answer seems to be, it's an extraordinarily consistent answer in an incredible number of fields, and that is you need to have practice to have apprenticed for 10,000 hours before you get good. Dedicating yourself to what you're doing and not necessarily seeing the benefit right away. You're not going to see it right away. The benefit is going to be when you get out of it, even if they don't ever give you anything. You've gained all that knowledge. So the employers are going to enable you, uh, you know, to, to gain the knowledge, but they're just your stepping stone into entrepreneurship. They're going to give you context. They're going to give you the contacts. You, know, you, you kind of look at the space in between. You know, you've got pillars. Imagine having pillars, and you know, there's <clears throat> there's there's Pinterest um, that has pictures, and there's YouTube that has video, and there's you know Facebook that has people, and there's Twitter that has topics and hashtags, and there's spaces in between those pillars that I, I kind of sat and looked at. I was like, well, where's the places? There's there's you know, there's people, and there's pictures, and there's you know. There's, there's no spot for me to be able to go say, uh, I want all the media that's coming out of the Blue Jays game, or I want all the media that's coming from the five resorts I want to travel to um, in Thailand, right? <clears throat> and I don't want to see what the resort's telling me. I want to see what the people are saying about the resorts. I don't want to look at those reviews, those whatever they put under there, because right, the perception is that some of them are real and some of them are marketing. So I could visualize any spot on earth through pictures, media, and text, through tweets. Long story short, um, ended up transforming that from a public social media system <clears throat> into something for law enforcement.
when you when you come up with it at the start is not always going to be what it's, it's going to be, but just you know you're going to find that niche if you're constantly thinking about how you can use the product outside of your initial thoughts. You need to be very open with your products. content from your service, which we backfill content for them, then you've solved the problem. And there's economies of scale as you start to bring all these advertisers together. And you're then getting the, the efficiency that not any one publisher could get. The partnerships are really big in this, right? Because you can't do everything. Um, now where we're creating um, you know, unique videos, we create about 150 a month um, on the delicious, uh, crafty, and uh, uh, Flawless channel, which is the beauty channel. Uh, Crafty is the DIY channel, and Delicious is the food channel. In the top 15 in France at one point, we didn't really hone in on the English market um, before expanding it. That was a mistake we made. That's something that I would definitely do differently. So I would hone the product first and then connect your on is to establish your brand. Um, so at the start, you know, you're going to say to people whatever your brand name is, um, in this case, Dibley. And you know, how many people out of 10 are you meeting that actually know what that means? And how many people out of 10, if they do know what it means, have a positive reaction to your brand? So I, uh, I walk them through uh, three steps. So the, the first thing I told them was, you know, give knowledge. The, the ability for you uh, to understand what the value is in your business, whether you're, uh, you know, running a yoga instructor business, or whether you're selling uh, comic book cards, or you're selling uh, billiard equipment, right? You have an inherent skill and inherent knowledge that you could give back to the community. The next one was um, give community. So you can imagine that there's a lot of chatter about either your your business or your topic around so, that unless you're creating a community around it. So he created um, a Facebook group around you know discussions around billiards and discussions around products that people were purchasing so they could go ask questions to the community. The next thing was, you know, give service. So during calls that he would get or orders that he would get online, he would call them. Like there was not one order at one point on his site that he would get a a virtual order, he would call them on the phone. You're, you're Manning from Manning Cues? Yes, you're calling me? I just placed an online order. He's like, yeah, I just wanted you to know about the product. It has these, uh, you know, these features. I have this other product that, you know, performs just as well. It's about a hundred bucks less. And he said, well, what, what we're talking about, aren't I going to make less money if I tell them that? He's like, 100% you are. But they're going to become advocates for your product. They're going to post in this community. You're going to build a business that is going to be much greater than you know the, the ten or twenty dollars you just lost right now. Don't worry about that. Then he would also tell them after that call, hey, there's also a community, and he would constantly reinforce the sphere of influence he had. That, so now he's got that brand online um, because of that track. Um, he's been in line for the past two years to do seven figures a year. So. It's, it was a very simple concept. I dipped my finger in just the amount that I just told you guys. I wasn't there programming for them. I wasn't there every day talking to them about it. Mm -hmm. It was literally just those three things that transformed this business. Uh, the personal life side, you gotta imagine as I was going through this, um, also had two young kids mm -hmm. uh, during this time. Um, they're now uh, two and a half and four and a half. Mm -hmm. And a very supportive wife. Um, so I, I put myself on a schedule. Saturday is the, the important part, uh, was I told my wife, this is, this is your time. Whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. Saturdays, Saturdays are yours. Uh, that was really important to her because she knew I was dedicated to time. It was very important to the family. They knew that I would be there for them during that time. Mm -hmm. um, you need to keep up with your friends. <laughs> For the 
past uh, 15 years, uh, I chose an intellectual or athletic hobby. Uh, so some of them being, you know, everything from building my own CNC machine to kiteboarding. Uh, did one year and I just like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna travel to Dominican. Um, gonna, cause that's the third best spot in the world for kiteboarding. They have school, I can start it and then I'm gonna practice that one here. Uh, one year I did longboarding, another year I did dance, another year I built a home automation system. You know, I would just move around each year, one year I did skydiving. So I would just choose a sport and commit. I, mean, I chose to dance because I couldn't dance at all. I put myself in a bad position all the time. Now I think I can dance, my wife tells me differently. <laughs> but just push your boundaries, learn different things, and that's going to create experiences, opportunity, and contacts as you move forward. Those contacts were so important for me as I, as I moved mm -hmm. outside of my, my boundaries. You're probably wondering, what's chapter five? Chapter five actually isn't Gary Manning's chapter. It's your chapter. It's time for us to go out there and create and innovate. Let's get it.